So now we're going to turn it over to Sandra, Lauren, and Gary to share. So I'm going to, Bonnie, I'd like to share my screen. Okay, Madeline will help you do that. Oh, um, nice. Do you see, does everyone see, a, you know, a girl, it should say refocusing? Yes. Are you seeing? Okay, great. Yes. And then let me just, I just want to get my, <clears throat> my sound uh, because there will be some video. Okay, we should be able to do this now. All right, so uh, Sandra is going to start our presentation. She and I are going to present together and then we'll follow our presentation with a video. So Sandra, are you ready? So as I listened this morning, I, you know, it became very apparent that we're all facing many, many challenges in addition to COVID. Just recently, I learned from Laura and she said, you know, COVID is a lot like being on a ride in a roller coaster in an amusement park. It's fast, it's furious, sometimes it's jerky, you don't know quite what's going to happen. And a lot of times it's pretty scary. COVID is a lot like that. I'd like to add to that analogy by saying COVID is a lot like riding on a roller coaster in an amusement park with eyeglasses on that Vaseline has been smeared all over the glasses. So you can't see where you're going. Things are kind of blurry. You're a little bit scared because you don't know where you're going. You don't know how to get there. You don't know anything. And it all seems to change just like the roller coaster ride. It changes in a heartbeat. It changes in a heartbeat. So when it comes to designing early childhood classrooms, we have a big challenge on our hands. That challenge is a lot like that roller coaster ride. We don't know what to expect. One day it's one thing, the next day it's another thing. So what Lauren and I thought we might do is give you a few ideas about refocusing. Lauren and I would like to offer a new idea about classroom design that's refocusing, getting the Vaseline off from your eyeglasses, refocusing and recentering and trying to balance your classroom with all the requirements that COVID is expecting, with the social distancing, with the masks, with the hand washing, with all of the things that are going on with COVID not to mention the physical things, but not to mention uh, and not, not to avoid the whole emotional impact that this is having on children. So what we're hoping to do today is show you a way that you could possibly recenter your classroom, refocus your classroom, and make it easier for children to navigate in close quarters, make it easier for children to have places to be and places to move about. So the whole idea is let's refocus a little bit because we have to because of COVID. So I grew up in Michigan and I'm listening to all the weather stories right now, but I grew up in Michigan at the end of the depression. And so fresh fruit like oranges it was a real treat. And I remember, especially at Christmas time, my uncle would send a bag of oranges to us. And my mom and dad would always put two or three oranges into our Christmas stocking. And I just remember what a wonderful, delicious treat that orange was, to be able to eat it, to be able to feel it, to be able to smell it. It was just such a wonderful treat. I totally remember my mom peeling the orange. She didn't cut the rind off. She peeled the orange and breaking it into sections and handing it to me as a small child. The taste of the orange was great, but the magic of being able to see what was inside of an orange, especially a child in the depression, especially a child that's from a home that is not wealthy, that is not even middle class, it was magic to be able to not only taste that orange,
but be able to reveal the secrets inside the orange. And that's what we're hoping to do today is reveal the magic of your classroom. So you're probably thinking, what in the world, Sandra? You probably have gone off the deep end. COVID has made you go off the deep end. What are you thinking about? What are you talking about? How do you connect oranges with designing learning environments? So let me tell you how. In this exercise, I want you to look closely at the geometry of an orange. Lauren and I looked at the geometry of the orange and the magic that the orange brings to us as inspiration for classroom design. Look closely at this image on the screen. You see the rind on the outside? Imagine that your classroom wall. You see the little segments on the inside? Imagine that's your classroom learning centers. And now, look at that hole right in the middle. I remember sometimes when my mom would slice the orange, I would take the orange up and look through the hole. And it was magical to see what you could see through the hole of an orange. So we're going to take the geometry of an orange, believe it or not, we're going to take that geometry of an orange and apply it to classroom design. And by looking at the classroom design and applying the geometry of an orange, we're going to start looking at classroom design from the middle, from that hole, to the outside rather than looking at traditional design, which is from the outside to the inside. So let's first begin with a traditional design approach, which is from the outside to the inside. So you may be surprised to see a huge chocolate bar here, especially as it relates to classroom design, but if you're like me and you're with kids on a daily basis, maybe chocolate is also part of your daily life. So for this presentation, we're using the chocolate bar and the orange to really clearly illustrate the difference between two different uh, strategies for laying out a classroom. In the orange, we see the radial geometry, everything radiating around a center point. And in the chocolate bar, you clearly see the grid. Um, so if you could keep these two images in your mind's eye as we move through the presentation, and they should be pretty memorable. Um, for this presentation, we've created a sample classroom to illustrate these concepts. The view on this page, do you see my, can you all see my arrow? Yeah? Okay, great. So we've created this sample classroom, um, and we're looking at a classroom from the top down, so you can see the square of the floor. This is the entry door to the classroom and directly across from it is an exit door out into the play yard. These are the cubbies for the children. These are windows looking outside um, and these are bathroom doors and a teacher's prep sink and cabinet. So on this image I've overlaid a grid and if you think about how this relates back to our chocolate bar, it should be you know, pretty clear. In a gridded layout, we rely on the grid's regular geometry. It creates equal sized and equal shaped spaces in the environment. This is a design strategy we've seen applied to classrooms and especially now during this time of COVID, the grid is used as a way to structure and control children's movement within the classroom. To create a gridded classroom layout, we typically begin by lining the walls with furniture to create learning centers or interest areas around the perimeter of the room. This is the concept that we're referring, referring to as designing from the outside in. So in this image, we've added a few labels to our classroom to help you visualize the grid layout concept. Placing interest areas around the room perimeter is a natural starting point for classroom design for many of us because the walls, the reality is the walls are one of the only fixed elements in the room along with doors and windows. But 
when we design a classroom in this rigid way, we end up limiting the potential of the classroom. And here's why. As I mentioned earlier, a grid is made up of equally sized and shaped angular boxes. But based on what we know about how children actually play, move, and interact, nothing about their behavior is grid-like. Beyond that, each interest area has different space needs based on how popular the center is with children or how much furniture and equipment is required. So equal size boxes there are not even serving our functional needs. And you can picture how much equipment and furniture goes into dramatic play, how much space we need for block play, how much spreading out children may wanna do when they're using manipulatives, how many tables and chairs we need in the writing center. So we've demonstrated the equal size boxes, they're not serving our functional needs. And you can also see that while the outer walls of the classroom are clearly programmed with interest areas, the center, this middle space is pretty ill-defined. In this case, it's reserved mostly for walking and is barely being used for children's work and play. This outside-in design approach, it's limiting our classroom's potential. And during COVID now, classroom floor space is especially at a premium. So we're going to turn to another design strategy that will help us open our classroom's physical space and potential up. So, what we're going to suggest is to consider using a radial approach to design. If you look at the class, uh, the orange slice on the left side of the slide, imagine the orange slice with the hole in the middle. Imagine as you look at the classroom diagram, the hole, the green circle is the hole in the middle. The alternative approach that we're going to explore is this radial approach. We're going to start in the middle and go out. We're going to design from the middle and go out. In a few minutes, you're going to see how this really looks um, if you're wondering, well, how does this really work? So if you think about designing from the middle and going out and using the, the orange slice as your inspiration, all the segments you can see, if you start in the middle, all this, uh, that, that's a huge community area. Everything radiates out. Everything radiates outward. They vary in size a little bit. You can adjust the line so you can vary in size a little bit. You can vary in the shape a little bit. So beginning in the middle with your classroom design and radiating out, you can see how you free up a lot of space. Look at the example of from the classroom door on the left to the playground door on the right, and look at how minimal space is being used for walkway. It, we don't need places to walk. We need places in COVID era for them to be. We need more places, we need more spaces, we need more foot space for children to be in COVID. We need to spread them out. We need to disperse them into all areas of the classroom. By beginning with the middle part of your classroom, the hole in the orange slice and spreading outward, we can better maximize the square footage that we have. So here you can see kind of, and I understand that these aren't maybe the right uh, learning centers and they might not be the required learning centers. I understand that. I'm just using this as an example. There's several benefits to beginning in the middle. The first benefit is you, that little orange circle, the hole in the orange slice, you create an area of community and that area of community is apparent and accessible from all of your learning, learning centers. You also have borrowed space from the middle, you, so you get more usable square footage. By using this radial design layout, we have recentered and refocused our classroom. We've gone away from the grid. Every, every space is the same size. We've gone away from um, getting rid of the walkways. We've tried to use every usable square inch that we can for the good of children, not for the good of walking, 
not for the good of storing, as you're going to see in a few minutes, because this idea is, it, it's a little radical. It's a little um, kind of thinking out there, out of the box, and you're going to see how, in a few minutes, how it plays out when we actually put furniture. It's not going to look like your typically designed classrooms where the learning centers are um, confined by, uh, by shelving unit. It's not going to look like that anymore. We're not going to use the chocolate design. We're going to use the orange slice design. So let's look at how the radial inside out design can be achieved in practice. In our sample classroom, we've begun by using 10 shelving units to create the radial framework. Each of these islands is made up of two shelving units placed back to back. So we're accessing each shelf from the outside. These we can think of as floating storage islands. And already you can see this is different than starting by lining our walls with storage furniture. If you look, if we look closely at one of our interest areas like dramatic play, you can see how the storage islands create a wedge-shaped space, and in that space, we can begin to place our furniture and equipment. This is one of the most popular interest areas in our classroom, dramatic play, a lot of children, a lot of furniture and equipment. So we've spread the furniture out using storage bins as spacers between the play sink, refrigerator, and stove. This gives a little more space for children to move around in the COVID classroom. In addition to the main area for dramatic play, which I've highlighted with this purple circle, we've also left room for children to move around the storage shelves. That's represented by this dashed line, this ellipse around the storage shelves. Notice that to achieve this, both ends of the shelving are open and away from the walls. This new area for dramatic play is much larger than the original gridded box. So there's also room for ancillary or secondary spaces for children to work and play surrounding the primary dramatic play space. This helps us spread, further, spread children out even farther, but naturally spread them out so that we can achieve the physical distancing that we need during COVID. And this is what our dramatic play space looks like with the additional ancillary or secondary workspaces added in. We've created a cozy space using a bench with a mirror behind it. Here's our bench and the mirror on the wall. We've also added a second table and chairs so that more children can utilize the space without being confined within the square grid. And then we could do the same thing with each of our other main interest areas. And I'm only calling these main because they're pretty furniture and equipment intensive. All of our interest areas are equally important, um, but I'm looking at the ones that are furniture intensive first. So these are some of the more popular. They require a lot of furniture and often they also have the most children. In order to achieve physical distancing, we need to use our valuable floor space in a smarter way. And these triangular shaped wedges, if you remember our orange diagram, the wedges gives us that option and it gives us the, the opportunity to open up the potential of our classroom. We've created spaces for children to be within the interest areas, but also to be around and between the shelving units. There's more space within this classroom for children to move and circulate, to breathe and to be. This is essential during COVID and beyond. And then we can fill out our classroom with the smaller secondary work areas and spaces for children. We've added small tables and chairs onto the ends of our storage units to maximize how we use the classroom interior while keeping the floor area open for children to flow. This is our inside out radial design solution. It's effective now during COVID when we want to and sorry, this is effective now during COVID, but again, I want to emphasize that this is something that could be implemented at all times. It supports children naturally, naturally through their patterns of work, play, and movement. What I think is most interesting and 
most compelling about using the orange slice radio design is you look in the middle now, you see that hole? You see that little hole in the middle? That is your sense of community. That is where you can have group time with the children being spread out using um, perhaps Chris Burkholder's idea of hula hoops. Um, that is your area of, and you see that sense of community, that hole in the middle, that circle in the middle of your classroom, all of your centers radiate back to all of your centers, all of your action radiates from. So it's a, a, it's a reciprocal kind of design where the, the hub of the center, the, the circle in the orange radiates out and it also comes back in. So I think that children are able, you're able to disperse children better, you're able to spread them out better. You see all sorts of areas in between the storage, um, uh, storage units, you see all sorts of areas there that children can be. What we have to do is create, in COVID era, we have to create more destinations, more spaces, more places, create little places at the end of the cabinet, uh, at the storage unit, like you see with the literacy, by the literacy and science at the very end, you see Lauren has added a table with a chair. That's what designing from the inside out does. It creates that sense of community. It creates the sense of continuity and a sense of connectedness, but not being connected by a bank of um, storage units and storage cabinets. So that's our idea. And it's very intentional. It's a very different way of looking at classroom design. It's very intentional. But designing with this radial orange approach is beneficial in the COVID classroom especially, but it is also a, maybe something you wanna try beyond COVID is what we want to see happen is we want children to be aware of COVID, for, for example, to wash your hands and to cover your face and make sure that you cover your face when you cough or sneeze and have your social or physical distance. We want the children to be aware of that because that's their safety. But what we don't want is we don't want children to emotionally be, be negatively emotionally connected to a a design that confines them, a design that doesn't let them be children, a design that forgets the magic of childhood. We don't want that to happen. So when we talk to children, like you're going to see in this three little interviews, when we talk to children, they talk more about COVID in the physical t things about COVID, and they talk not a thing about how their environment has changed. We don't want them to be aware of their environment. We don't want them to feel confined. We don't want them to feel sad. We want them to have joyful, spirited environments. And so I thank um, Chris Burkholder for these three wonderful videos. When asked about COVID, none of these children, you will notice, not one word about their classroom. It was all about the physical aspects of COVID. Okay, let me know if my audio does not work, okay? COVID is something that gets you sick and you gotta go to the hospital. The audio is working? We're good? Yes. Yes. Oh, hang on. Because, because of COVID, my teacher was mad to keep me safe. I think COVID is a drone, like, 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 um, so, I don't know what basically what COVID is. I'm out of here, he says. I'm out of here. I don't know what COVID is. I love that. I'm out of here. Thank you, Chris, for providing those videos. I truly appreciate it.
I'm hoping that um, Lauren and I have given you just a little bit of inspiration, just a little bit about that magic, what's inside of an orange when you peel it and you divide it into segments and you taste it and it's wonderful. That's what we need to have um, our environments be for young children. Magical, wonderful, inspiring. Thank you. Thank Thanks you, Sandra so and Lauren. That was terrific um, and certainly inspires us to think differently about design, about environments, and how those environments feel. So thank you. And Gary, were you going to share? We, um, we asked some of our partners and some of our employees and some of the schools we work with around the world to speak to children and ask them about their impression of COVID and how it's impacted their classroom or their routines. And we, we got a lot of video and we tried to create a little excerpt for, to show some of the different reactions just outside the US. And um, if you look at this and you watch it from a comparative standpoint, you'll notice children speak about their routines. So I think what Sandra and Lauren just presented is a framework for children's routines and hopefully the videos, um, although you all work with children and some of you have children or grandchildren and you know how important routines are, hopefully this captures from an international perspective um, some of uh, the beauty of what children think about when they approach the classroom each day. And Lauren's gonna play it off of her screen. COVID comes. I cannot go to school and learn English because my teacher named Andy cannot go in Vietnam. He must stay home because COVID. And my teacher make me sad because they don't allow me to sit by my friend and talk and play. I must wash my hand and wear the face mask. And when I meet Andy, I feel very happy. And I say, Tisha, long time don't see. Tick tap niggy. So no. Oh, did it? Huh? Oh, did it? How did you put the poop was love day? Oh, did it? 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 Oh, do you like seeing your friends at school? Yeah, I wish I could see my friends and what do I mean? The school has closed because domes and we can't touch anything right now. And it's, it's, it's night time and we can't do school time anymore. It's <laughs> Oh, 
啊、哦，有自己的。我是二十二我是二十二号。因为因为不开一个门就可以了，不让不让雨熙习惯做病毒进来。嗯嗯，老师教过我们洗手，先这样那样这样，然后再这样再这样再那样再那样，然、嗯、然后再这样，牙膏在外面，让里面也凉。哎，洗手在家不出去、啊。I am 一零，中三班。啊。得用西部洗手法，要得戴口罩。那个新冠肺炎的表格、签名字的，全都是端的。还有，睡在教室里面睡觉。强睡在睡觉的房间里，因为现在是新冠肺炎，所以路上有灰尘，所以要戴口罩。首先呢，到校门口有一个错峰的一个上学的时间，然后我们学校有的初一、初二的经常就早到，然后经常被华夏堂堂批评。<笑>然后呢，进校门要排队，一个一个的检查体温的表格，然后测体温。进去之后呢，进校门之后会有这个卫生委员给我们测量体温，有然后也有表格会记录，然后每周每周五会交到学校的卫生保健室。然后这个教室里的座位呢，以前就是应该是同有同桌，就是两个人排在一起，然后现在就一个人一个座。嗯，吃中饭的时候呢，每人要带着自己的餐具，然后要用嗯、呃、免洗洗手液洗手，然后嗯、呃、去进操进去操场，然后。还有这个出校门、进校门，这个路线都是有规定的路线的，对，规定的路线。放学，然后到呃晚自习和哦没有晚自习，是中午的时候，就是这个卫生委员会也会给我们测一次体温。放学的时候。就是按规定路线出去，然后也有错峰的上下学的时间。哦。然后教室的门外都装了一个免洗洗手液的一个机器，然后在呃卫生间的门口也有免洗洗手液的机器，就新的安装了一个。我知道。那我问你一下，你那你自己害怕新冠病毒吗？不害怕。That those are some of the kids that spoke to us, and thanks to everyone who pulled that together. Some of some of the people are on the call today. Thank you, Gary. Thanks for bringing、um, the voices and perspectives of children to our conversation. Sometimes we、uh, kind of skip over that step and forget for a little while that we need to find out from children. What they're experiencing, and not assume that we know. So, thank you.